I'm on Gotchang Island in eastern Thailand. And this is one of the prized delicacies, which we're gonna cook and eat in three different ways. But really quickly, first, how did we get here? In order to support local communities and highlight their unique food, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has recently announced Thailand's hidden dishes, which includes five rarely seen Thai dishes that come from five lesser visited provinces. And they asked me to travel across Thailand to eat all of them. We've already eaten the hidden dish of Northern Thailand. Tasted a rare food in Khon Ken. And ate toddy palm fruit curry in Pepuri. Today we're driving to Gat Chang Island in search of a fish that's so good, you don't even need to cook it. Good morning, hey everyone. Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, and we started off this morning at our home in Bangkok. We are driving to Eastern Thailand and the province is called Trat. And then we're gonna take the ferry on to a very famous island, which is called Gat Chang, where we are in search of the next Thailand's hidden dish. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm, guava. Excellent. Oh yeah. Could I have some pineapple? Wait, can I see the whole bag? And this area is actually very well known for pineapple. Mmm. Oh, the pineapple's amazing. Okay. We are back on the road and we're probably gonna stop for lunch before we get on the ferry. Okay, so we're probably about an hour still away from Trat, uh, but we stopped in the town, it's called Jantaburi. Now the restaurant is called Janton Pochana, and it's absolutely one of the legends, one of the heritage restaurants of Jantaburi. Oh, oh man, it smells so good. And these are the dishes, I mean, some of the dishes that you absolutely have to eat when you come to Eastern Thailand, including one of the main most famous dishes, which is called mu cha muang, which is pork. It's kind of a pork stew with uh, the main ingredient are garcinia leaves, giving it this incredible sourness. Oh, huge pieces of pork, all the cha muang leaves, and you can see how chunky that curry paste is as well. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's sweet and sour with so many herbs in it. And even though we're only three or four hours away from Bangkok, this is a dish that you can rarely find in Bangkok. The dish is called Krawan Pad Cha Pla. So this is fish, stir-fried Pad Cha with cardamom stems and lots of herbs in here and chilies. Mm. Oh yeah, wow, that's good. Those cardamom stems, they're such a unique, such an incredible ingredient. They have this unique kind of snappy crispness to them. And then this kind of spicy floral aroma. Oh man, but those cardamom stems are just incredible. Oh yeah, that's spicy too. Oh, wow. That is a, a winning dish right there. It's so good. And then the soup that we got is called Platom Rakam Sai Grawan. And 
Okay, let me just explain that to you what it is. It's a boiled fish soup. And there it is right there. That is the rakam, which is a type of snake fruit, which gives it sourness. And then there's also the cardamom shoots, the grawan in here as well, giving it flavor. Oh man, what a dish. There's chilies floating around, there's coriander, there's culantro. Let me scoop this into the, to my bowl actually. And so, okay, let me get some of the rakam. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, I almost forgot how good this soup is. Oh man, what a soup. This fruity sourness of the snake fruit, the onions, the shallots in there, the green chilies, the, the culantro. And then you've got that grawan, which kind of has a galangali flavor to it in the soup. The broth is so clean, sour, unbelievable flavor. Oh man, that is a, that is a healing broth. And then some of the, that fresh, fresh fish. Mm. And the fish just melts in your mouth. Oh man, I love that soup. And then we got one more dish here. I got this uh, anamprik, it's a chili dip called sangwa here. And there's shrimp in it, there's lemongrass. Those are the requirements. And then oftentimes it can be makrut lime leaves as well as magrut lime juice, I think. I think so, I'm not totally sure. Uh, but you can scoop on vegetables with this. There's chilies in here. Man, that looks chunky and fragrant. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so good as well. Really finely shaved lemongrass. And then also the makrut lime leaves, so it's really citrusy. Shallots in there, the flavor of the shrimp. Oh, man. And I have eaten at this restaurant a couple of times, but I almost forgot how good the food is. Just solid, consistent, and local regional to Eastern Thailand. This is a, a, an absolute must stop on your way to Trat, on your way to Kha Chang. Actually, everything is really good, but I think I like the soup and the, the fish pad cha the best. Oh. The consistency over the years has been exceptional here. Oh, that was such a good meal. What a restaurant. From here, it should be about one hour to get to the ferry to Gat Chang. Ferry, uh, 310 baht for three of us. And the ferry, uh, we're at Ao Tamachat Pier. The ferry leaves approximately every 30 minutes. Nice. Where? Welcome to Trat. And we just had to wait only like five, 10 minutes. We got on the next ferry and we're on our way. You can see Kat Chang, it's very, very close to the, to the mainland. I think it's just a 15, 20 minute ferry ride if I remember correctly. But yeah, you can see that right there. That's, that's Kat Chang. Welcome to Kha Chang. It actually takes 30, 40 minutes for the ferry. Uh, from here, we need to drive all the way actually to the other side of the island, all the way to the bottom of the island. We made it, what a beautiful drive, Kha Chang. I mean, we passed by coconut trees, lagoons, just lush, 
green and we drove all the way to the south of the island to a community called Salak Pet. Oh, that breeze coming off of the sea is so spectacular. Mountains in the background. And this community is known for fishing. Uh, I mean, they fish. And I mean, that's actually what we came for is a certain type of seafood. It's a certain type of fish. That is Thailand's hidden dish of Kha Chang in Trat. Oh, so he's baiting them. They have a number of different fish, and I think what they actually do here is uh, there's people that go fishing, get fish from the sea, but then they keep them here, and they also might raise them a little bit more mature, bigger here in these nets within the seawater. But that's what this community is known for here. Okay, here we go. They're gonna lift, lift the net. We got the fish harvested as fresh as possible. We're gonna head back to the kitchen and they're gonna cook it in three different ways. He's just making swift work of that fish. I mean, that is as fresh as possible. Oh, the meat of that fish is beautiful. So pure, so white and clean. That's the filet. The first dish that we're making, it actually involves no cooking, sashimi. The sashimi plate is ready. We're going to move on to the next fish. Oh, so that hot water just kind of shocks it real fast. Oh, you can already see it kind of peeling back from the bones. Okay. Okay, and then that goes on to the steaming plate. Oh, okay, and those mushrooms go directly onto the top of the fish. The fish is going to steam for about seven minutes, she said. In the meantime, we're going to make the sauce. Okay, so this is for the sauce for the fish. Black pepper, Chinese alcohol or wine, and then, oh, sesame oil. Okay, so then oyster sauce. And then the soy sauce goes in. Oh man, as soon as she pours on that sauce, it smells so good. The sesame oil, the oyster sauce, oh, the black pepper in there. She... Okay, come. So it's done, but just needs to steam just for like a minute, just to wilt those vegetables. The fish oil has already come out. Oh, that's gonna be so good.
When the fish is so fresh and so high quality, it in, I mean, it requires no cooking, just nothing, just straight up sashimi. And introducing to you Thailand's hidden dish of trat, bla yam sawat, coral grouper. Oh, I cannot wait to try it. It's just thin slices. It's actually, the meat is actually transparent. Okay, going in with nothing. First bite. Mmm. Mmm. All the muscular texture, the cleanness of it. It's so pure. That is good pure like that, but it definitely would be better with some soy sauce and some wasabi. Dip it into the wasabi soy sauce. Oh, wow. All the wasabi up the nose. Oh. Okay, I mean, the raw fish on its own is good, but there is a reason Japanese eat sashimi with soy sauce and wasabi. It just takes it to the next level, brings out the flavor even more. Next up, we gotta try the steamed. The same fish, steamed. And I love how they, I mean, she really made sure not to overcook it. You're gonna see that the fish is just gonna tear away from the bones without a doubt. Yeah, look at that. Perfectly cooked, the ginger in there. I do wanna scoop up some of that that broth, that sauce as well. Let's just try it. Mm. That's an amazing textural change when it transforms from being raw, which has this chewy muscular texture, to being steamed, which is just melts in your mouth. The fish itself is just, yeah, again, ultra fresh, ultra quality just tears away from the bones. It's so meaty, um, so clean tasting. In the sauce, you just get that hint of sweetness from the oyster sauce. You taste that aroma of the sesame oil and the ginger, the green onions in there, the Chinese celery. It's delicious both ways. Now you might be wondering, because I mentioned there's gonna be three dishes, that's just two dishes. That's because the third dish, third dish, is gonna be made with the head and the bone of the sashimi. So we're gonna take that to, back to the kitchen and they're gonna make the third dish with it. However, when you come to this entire fishing area and this entire fishing area of Gachang, what I remember being my absolute favorite dish to eat here is something called Blamuk Dat Diao, which is they, they go fishing for squid around this region and then they dry it in the sun, it's supposed to be for one day. Might be longer than that, but we'll see. Um, so it's not really jerky, but it is just slightly dehydrated, condenses the flavor. Then they take that and deep fry it. So we had, to, I mean, you cannot come here without eating Blamuk Dat Diao. So we've got the tentacles, we've got the body. Look at these big slices of squid. I'm gonna try the tentacle first. Oh, oh, oh wow, <laughs> yes. It's so good. It's tender. And when it was, when they dry it, it does condense the flavor of the squid. Then deep fried. Man, it's tasty. The day sun-dried squid is an absolute must when you come here. Let's try the whole piece. Dip it into the sauce. Looks like an egg roll. Mm. What's amazing is how tender it is. Again, the texture is transformed. It's not chewy or blubbery at all or rubbery. It's just tender like meat. Sashimi was amazing. And let's go make the dish with the, the head and the body. With the bones in the head, I'm choosing to get a dish which is called tom som. Now tom som is a sour soup that you'll find all over Thailand, in the south, in Bangkok, but every region has their own variation of this dish. And so the version from Trat or from Eastern Thailand is unique. It's something you won't find out of this region. And so that's the dish I chose to, to order it with. So for the tom som, she starts with boiling water. She adds in some curry paste, which I think is mostly just a chili. It's like a ground chili paste already uh, that has some flavor. Then she boils the fish. She adds in fish sauce. So this is tamarind pulp. But the main ingredient that makes it sour is tamarind pulp. Gives it a sweet and sour taste. So that goes in tamarind pulp. Then she tosses in some ginger and some green onions.
That goes into a fire pot. And then she sprinkles on some more dry chilies on top. What a dish, what a soup. What a way to use those bones in the head. Okay, a couple more Oh, here it is. Is there fire coming out of the top? Yes, there is. Well, we're continuing with round two of this meal, the thum sum. Let's scoop this. Actually, there's still quite a lot of meat from the bones, from the collar, from the other parts of the, the fish. And then again, the chili paste in here, the, the ginger in here, the tamarind makes it that brown color and gives it its sourness and ginger. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's spicy. The tamarind gives it not just this sweetness, but this tartness and this like well-rounded fruitiness. Then you've got the contrast of the ginger, the flavor of the fish broth. Oh man, it's so good. Oh. It just kind of soothes your throat growing, going down. And then again, pieces of the coral grouper. Oh yeah, big pieces. I think I got a piece of the stomach. Oh, fatty and blubbery. Excellent. Oh, the dried chilies too. That she, she sprinkled them in at the end. Oh, yes. Oh, so good. I love that broth. This one is called kana plakem. So it's kana, which is like Chinese broccoli, stir fried with lots of garlic, but then the, the flavoring ingredient is black hem, which is salted fish. And you can see, if you're not careful, look at these are green chilies just camouflaged in with the vegetable. Oh, you gotta take one of those. And this should be eaten with a spoonful of rice because it's salty because of that fish. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's tasty. Yeah saltiness, but not more than a saltiness. It's that umami that is a result of preservation of salty fish, that depth of flavor, the garlic in there, and those green chilies just pop in your mouth, just burst. Going more in for some of the, the greens. Man, that is so good. It's just simple, but so tasty. Mm. And they do it so well. I mean, I do remember the food was good here last time we came here five years ago, but it just reinforces it. They're doing well. Even the size of this restaurant just is a demonstration of like what they're doing, how they're cooking, just peaceful, spacious, community driven, supporting the local fishers in the area. That oh. was maybe. And the soup is spectacular. Okay. There's still so much meat on these bones. We still have more. We're gonna drive, and if you, actually, if you look at a map of Gachang, you'll notice that right now we're in the very far south. And there's this, there's a road that goes almost around the entire island, but there's this little stretch, I think because of the mountain and the way the, the water works, that you cannot pass through. So if we could go around the south side, we'd actually not be that far away, but because the road uh, ends here, you actually have, we have to drive all the way back to the north of the island, pass by the ferry, and then drive down the other side, the opposite side, which is the more populous side of the island. We're gonna go to a restaurant that ex it's really highly rated, and we're gonna have the same coral grouper, but a dish cooked in a totally different way. Kao Kwan Chang's Thai gastronomic experience. I love all the hanging potted indoor plants. Beautiful. Okay, so they have the fresh Blayam Sawat, the coral grouper, local from Kat Chang. They have the fish ready. They're gonna show us one of their specific dishes that they make with the fish. It's called a pla. It's a type of salad with the fish, and they're, I mean, in English, they call it ceviche on the menu. 
It's a type of raw fish salad, and they're gonna use a lot of herbs, a lot of really beautiful botanical flowers, all edible flowers, microgreens, and then all the amazing Thai herbs in the recipe. So we're gonna see how it's made. Uh, they're gonna start by filleting the fish. So then that fish is washed and then iced. You can just see how pure, how fresh that fish is. So fresh, so clean. The fish is diced, then it's iced, then it's uh, marinated in lime juice and a little bit of vinegar. She said let that soak for about five, 10 minutes or so uh, to just get that acidity, just slightly cooking the fish. By makrut. So that's makrut, lime leaves, very finely shaven go in. Okay, mint leaves. Okay, and this is coriander and green onions. And that's very finely shaved lemongrass. Oh man, the slicing skills. Oh, so you want to rinse out that fish? Oh, I need my like, curl like, huh? Wow. Dragon fruit, red dragon fruit, or purple dragon fruit juice. She puts some of the fish into red dragon fruit juice, and I think that's not gonna really provide that much flavor, but just kind of uh, give it a natural food coloring just as part of the beauty, because I, I mean, you can already see that this restaurant is not just about the food, but about the just aesthetic beauty, the natural, just like everything is a floral design. Okay, so that was actually impressive, the way she made that pla. Again, it's called a pla, this type of salad. I don't know really of a pretty way to, it's so pretty, but I don't know of a pretty way to eat this. I think we just tear in, destroy some of that fish with some of the, all of those herbs with that, that dressing on the inside. Mmm. Oh. The freshness of the fish. It's so tender. And what you immediately notice is the lemongrass, the finely shaped uh, shallots, all those herbs in there, the acidity. I did notice that she didn't add any chilies. However, she did give me a little side of chilies that you can add on your own. This would greatly enhance it. Oh yeah. Mm. Really delicate, really, actually, really delicious. So refreshing, very good with those finely shaved chilies as well. The other dishes in this series, the other of Thailand's hidden dishes are actual dishes. They are driven by an ingredient, but today in Trat, it's all about, or in Kat Chang, it's all about the fish and the many different ways that it can be eaten, just the delicacy that it is. And this is, again, just a different demonstration. Totally modern take, but really good, really refreshing, really delicate, and I think really balanced, as well as extremely refined. Just pretty is what it is. This is the miang kam, which is another traditional Thai dish wrapped in beetle leaves or piper lalat leaves. And this is her own take on it. So what you do is you take one of these little cups. Well, it's kind of served like like pani puri style. Take some of the, this should be like a sweet uh, sauce. Mmm. Oh yeah. It looks totally different. But all those flavors are there. You have a little wedge of lime, you have a peanut, you have coconut in there. You have the country wrapper, you have the bai chapu leaf. Good. It's like a 
harmony of flavors in your mouth. Okay, next up I'm gonna try the Popia Sot. This is the fresh spring rolls. Again, the most pretty and colorful fresh spring rolls you'll ever see. And this one was with shrimp. I think there's uh, salmon eggs on top and cucumber on the inside. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, the sesame seeds. You might not be able to see it, but there's a thick tiger shrimp on the inside. Meaty, refreshing, crunchy, salty. The sesame oil, the flowers, the herbs. Well, it's actually, the next dish has arrived. Look at this. It's called Bikka Yatsai. So it's fried chicken wings, which are then stuffed with sticky rice and then made into a salad. It's a straight up sculpture. I'm gonna grab one of the, the wing tips. Try to dip, dip into all that chunky. The, oh, there's cashews, there's shallots, there's cucumbers, there's herbs, there's flowers. Oh, there's the red and purple dragon fruit. Oh yeah, fried chicken with the gooey, glutinous, sticky rice on the inside, fragrant. And then you've got this dressing that's kind of sweet and sour from the dragon fruit, crispy, fresh cucumbers. Oh, wow, that's tasty. Mm. Mm-hmm. Pretty and tasty. The next dish, and the chef mentioned that this is a traditional dish from Trat, of course, in a modern version, Yam Gai Bai Makro. And it's a chicken salad with the leaves of a water olive. Nice. So a chicken salad. This looks, again, look at all those herbs and flowers and beautiful, beautifulness. Mmm. Nuttiness, very peanutty. Has a nice like sourness to it. Sweet but not overly sweet, just a balance of it. Mm. And then shredded chicken. And all those herbs, a lot of mint in there, a lot of uh, makrut, uh, makrut lime leaves. Mm. We got one more dish. And this is a dish I've eaten many, many times, but this is a total transformation in the way it looks. Gangbu by chaplu. So it's a crab curry with chaplu leaves, piper lalat, or like a type of beetle leaf, and served with kind of ji and rice noodles. But typically, I mean, it's a whole bowl of curry and the leaves are sliced or put in whole, but you have pieces of curry, but she's done it like bite-sized. I think this is the first time I've ever had a bite-sized curry wrapped in the leaves. So you take one of these, put it onto your noodles, and then every one is a little packet, is a little bite. And then you grab some of the noodles, with that little bite of curry crab on the inside. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that is delicate and fresh and spongy. Mmm. Okay, the, the curry is definitely on the milder side, but you do taste the quality and the the freshness of everything and the richness of that coconut milk. Definitely is a little bite-sized curry. Mm. There's nuggets of crab. Mm. I mean, basically every dish here has been turned into a garden. I've had a fantastic time in Gat Chang, and I want to say a huge thank you to the Tourism Authority of Thailand for making this entire trip happen. From here, tomorrow morning, we will drive all the way back to Bangkok, then we'll catch a flight to the south of Thailand for what might be the biggest food adventure yet. <laughs> <laughs>